Okay, so welcome to this lecture. So in the previous lecture, we had defined connectedness and today we will continue with that uh, topic. And today we are going to define path components of X. I'm sorry, not the path components, the connected components. Uh, so let X be a topological space. And uh, we put an equivalence relation. Okay, let's put an e a relation on the points of X as follows. Uh, we say that X is equivalent to Y if there is a connected subset. T contained in X such that X comma Y are in T. So let us check that this is an equivalence relation. That this defines an equivalence relation. So there are three, three things which we need to check. First, we need to check that x is equal to x for all x and x. Right? This is clear because by taking t equal to just the singleton set x. Any singleton set x is connected because for a set to be disconnected, it has to have at least two points. Right? Because we cannot write the singleton set as a disjoint union of non-empty open subsets. In fact, as a disjoint union of non-empty subsets. So, the second point we need to check is if x is equal to y, then y is equal to x, right? This is also clear as if t is a connected subset which contains x comma y, then it obviously contains y and x again. So y is equal to x. Uh, 3, if x is equal to y and y is equal to z, then x is equal to z. Right? To, to show this, recall that, that in the previous lecture, we had proved that if T1 and T2 are connected subsets of X such that T1 intersection T2 is non empty, right? Then the union T1 union 2 is non empty is connected. Right. Now since x is equal to y, there exists connected subset T1 such that x comma y are in T1. Right. Similarly, since y is equal to z, there is connected subset T2 such that y comma z belong to T2, right? So then y is in the intersection and so it is not empty and thus T1 union T2 is connected and contains x and z, right? So, thus x is equal to z, right? So, this shows that 
the sim is an equivalence relation. Okay. Now, every time we have an equivalence relation on a set X, we can decompose it into equivalence classes. So, this equivalence relation breaks X into a disjoint union of equivalence of equivalence classes. Right. So, we can write x as a disjoint union of x i's. i is in some index set i. Yeah. So, and each x i is the equivalence class of some x. Right. And x is equal to y if and only if uh, x comma y belong to the same x i right ok. So, we have this following proposition uh, which has let us say three parts. So, every connected subspace of x is contained in x i for some i right. Given any connected subspace of x, it is going to be contained in one of the x i's. Uh, so, the second part is uh, each x i is connected right. So, e every connected subspace is contained in some x i and each of these x i's is connected. So, therefore, these two will imply that x i's are maximally connected are maximal connected subsets of x and the third point is each x i is close in x. So, let us prove this proposition uh, So, let T be uh, connected subspace of X right. So, assume that T intersection X i is not empty and t intersection x j is on empty. So, we will prove the first point by contradiction. So, let us assume that a connected subspace meets two x i's. So, it meets x i and x j where i is not equal to j right. So, let t comma s belong to t right. So, then by the definition of the equivalence relation. So, then t is equal to s right as t is connected and it contains both t and s. I am sorry. So, I should have written Let T be in T intersection x i and S be in T intersection x j. Right. Then as S comma T are in T, this implies S is equal to T. Uh, right. Uh, but then this implies that the equivalence class of T is the same which is x i is equal to the equivalence class of s which is x j right and this is a contradiction. because x i is not equal to x j. So, therefore, given any connected subspace, it can be contained only in one x i. Okay. 
next let us prove, so this proves 1, next let us prove 2. So, let x i be an equivalence class. and let x be in x i ok. So, we fix we fix this point x ok. Then for any y in x i yeah, since x and y both of them are in x i uh, as x is equivalent to y there is a connector subspace. T sub y contain in x such that x i sorry no sorry x right I am just using the definition of the equivalence relation such that x and y belong to T sub y ok. Uh, so, clearly from this part 1 yeah from point 1 it follows that ty is contained in xi right so thus we can write xi as union over all these y in xi T sub y. Okay. Uh, right. So this inclusion is obvious. This inclusion is obvious because for each y in xi, the subset T sub y that is contained in xi and therefore, when we take a union it is going to be contained in xi yeah? and conversely for the other inclusion t sub y for every y in xi t sub y contains y right. So, therefore, this is actually equal right. So, now uh, we have this variant of the earlier lemma we had proved. So, uh, consider the following the following statement. Uh, let T i be a family of connected subsets of x and suppose the intersection of all these is non empty right. So, then the union T i is connected ok. So, the proof of this is very similar to the proof of this lemma that we proved uh, this one this one right. So, uh, let us just try and prove it. So, uh, suppose the union is not connected right. Then there exists non empty open subsets u and v such that in x both in x. So, it says is union T i is written as the disjoint union intersected with u right. Both these are uh, non empty and they are of course disjoint 
open subsets in this union. Okay, so now uh, so to let we fix this element a. The idea is the same as in the earlier one, earlier lemma. We fix this element a, right? So now we can intersect both sides with T i. So this will imply that T i is equal to T i intersected u. Okay, so we can fix uh, a, and before we, yeah, and assume. A is in this union intersection U. Right? Let's assume this. Right? So now we intersect this equation with T i on both sides. So we get T i is equal to T i intersected U, this joint union, T i intersected V, right? Uh, now, this contains A and so is non empty, right? And on the other hand, T i is connected, T i is connected. This implies T i, which forces that T i intersection V has to be empty, right? So, this implies that T i is complete, completely contained inside U, okay, for every i, and this happens for every i, right? So, this implies that this union. T i intersected with V is empty, which is a contradiction. Right. So, this intermediate lemma tells us that uh, this union is connected when all the T i's are connected and their intersection is non empty. Right. So, now we will apply this to our situation. So, Applying this to our situation, we get that x i we have written as, as a union of y in x i t y. Each t y is connected, and the intersection of all these t y's it at least contains x, right? So this implies that the intersection is non-empty. Because all the T y's they contain x, right? So this implies that x i is connected. So this proves two. Okay. And finally, let's prove three. Uh, as x is connected, as x i is connected. This implies. So we had seen this corollary that A is connected in X implies A closure is connected. We have proved this earlier. So this implies that X I closure is connected. Right. But uh, each every by part one by part one. Uh, each x i closure is contained in a unique x j, right? But then, so thus, this x j has to be x i because x i is contained in x i closure, right? Thus, x i closure is contained in x i, which implies that x i is equal to x i closure. So this implies that x i is closed. So this completes the proof of the proposition. So this completes the proof of the proposition. Right. So the proposition says that given any topological space X, we can break it up into these equivalence classes, uh, and each equivalence class is defined by the relation of uh, by that relation that that we started the lecture with. Uh, right. And each of these equivalence classes, they are 
connected and uh, they are closed and given any other connected subspace, given any connected subspace is contained in one of these equivalence classes. Right? So, let us just def definition. So, the equivalence classes are called the connected components. So, as an example, let us work this out, right. So, let Q contained in R uh, have the subspace topology. Right. So, what are the what are the connected components? So, we claim that ok. So, before that note that uh, given any A in Q the subset singleton A is connected. Right. So, the question is what is a maximal connected subs, uh, subset which contains this singleton A right? and that will be the connected component containing A. Now, uh, we claim that uh, the connected component containing A is just this set A, right. Why is that? So, basically uh, what we are saying is we have taken written Q, we can write this at, we can write it as a disjoint union of connected components x i, yeah. So, now choose each x i is non empty obviously and uh, just pick any A in this x i and the claim is x i is equal to A, right. So, let us see this, why is that? So, if not, suppose uh, B also belongs to X i and B is not equal to A, right. So, then let us assume that. So, suppose that uh, B is strictly greater than A, right. So, then we have this A is over here, B is over here and we can choose a rational, irrational C right choose an irrational c yeah choose an irrational c right so then we can write xi so c is not in q and xi is in q uh, therefore c is not in xi so then xi does not contain c right and so we can write x i as a disjoint union of open subsets minus infinity comma c disjoint union c comma infinity. Right, but this contradicts both these are non empty because this contains a and this contains b and both these are open and it is a disjoint union right. This contradicts the connectedness of x i right. So, thus x i is forced to be a singleton right. So, thus x i is forced to be a single point. Right. So, therefore, all the connected components are just A in Q. Right. So, these are yeah. uh, is the decomposition of Q 
into connected components. Right? And uh, let us make a remark. This is obvious. Uh, X is connected if and only if it has only one connected component. Okay, so, this remark is obvious. Right? Because if x is connected, then given any two points x and y, the subset T can be taken as equal to x. Right? So, therefore, uh, there will be just one equivalence class uh, in the decomposition. And conversely, if there is just one equivalence class, then that has to be x and therefore, x is going to be connected because each equivalence class is connected. Uh, so, we will end this lecture here and uh, in the next lecture, we will continue, we will introduce the topic of path connectedness.